All right, this is section 811. We're in a new section, polynomials. And this is a great follow up to what we did in class because we're actually going to name and codify a lot of the things that we did in the in class activity. And so the objective or the goal is going to be we're going to understand the end behavior of a function. We're going to describe what multiplicity is and how it interacts with the zeros of a function. And then we're going to sketch a polynomial function. We need to know those other two things to be able to sketch a polynomial function. So the first, the end behavior. Now, the end behavior of a function is a way for us to describe what is happening to the function, which are our y values, as the x values approach the ends of the graph. So basically, we're asking ourselves, what is y doing when x goes to negative infinity? What is y doing? when x goes to positive infinity. And essentially, we're thinking in terms of, is my y going up forever when I go to negative infinity? Is my y going down forever as x goes to negative infinity? And then as x goes to positive infinity, is my y going up forever? Or is my x going, or is my y going down forever? So if we were to look at this example here, um, f of x equals x squared, Right? If we say x goes to negative infinity, what we're actually imagining is we're substituting numbers in for x. Negative 1, negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000. And as you plug it in, the question is, OK, as it's going to that negative infinity direction, is my y going up forever or is my y going down forever? And so as we plug in those values, if you notice, y is getting bigger and bigger. So what we would say is, as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity. Even if we wanted to visualize this, right? as x goes to negative infinity, my y goes to positive infinity. As x goes to positive infinity, my y is also going to go to positive infinity. And so we need to know this in behavior mainly because it allows us to make assumptions about the polynomial. And so it helps us sketch it. It helps us graph it. And so there are going to be two things that we need to look at when it comes to our in behavior. We need to look at two things. And so this value, this ax to the n, we call that the leading term. And so what we need to know for that leading term, now the leading term has the highest exponent, right? So it doesn't matter what order it is, whatever the highest exponent is, that's our leading term. And so the idea here is we need to know is that value in front of our leading term, is that positive or negative? So positive or negative. And then is the degree, which is that highest exponent, is that even or odd? And so if it's even, I know if my leading term is positive or my leading coefficient is positive, they're both going to go up. So if you notice here, they both go up. And then here, if my leading coefficient is negative, they're both going to go down. Now, when it comes to an odd function, when my n is odd, k okay, one's going to go up and one's going to go down. And so when your leading coefficient is positive, it's going to go up that way and down that way. When it's negative, it flips. So it goes in the other direction. Now, the way that I usually remember this, and this is what helps me, okay, let's so here's the chart that we should know. I kind of compiled it for you. This needs to be memorized as a flashcard. You should get this down. I just basically took these two slides here and I just combined the ideas together. I imagine always a parabola and I envision my cubic because my parabola x squared well that's even well if you notice it both goes up and both goes down like a parabola my odd one goes up one goes down well it follows that same pattern and then if it was negative it goes the other way and so if I just know this right and it's positive well negative means reflection over the x so that's why it flips okay negative well that's gonna go down and that's gonna go up so uh, some of it's going to help us memorize it, but we have to have this memorized. You're going to sit there and be like, I don't know what to do. Well, that's because you don't have in behavior memorized. You need to have in behavior memorized here. 
So I could easily just sketch the in behavior of the following just by looking at these. So I can look at this and be like, okay, here's my leading term, positive, even. So therefore, it's gonna look like that. For this next one, negative, odd. So my degree is odd. My leading term here is negative. And so that's the shape, right? You can even use that chart. Go back and look at the chart. If we go to look at the chart, right? Odd, negative. That's the shape. Here, positive, odd. So it's going to look like that. And then negative, even. And so it's going to look like that. Now, sketching a polynomial, once we know what the in behavior is, then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to know two other pieces of information. The first is we're going to need to know the zeros, which are the x-intercepts, and then its respected multiplicity. We're going to talk about that in a second. We need to know the y-intercepts and then the in behavior. If we know those three things, we can go through and we can sketch a polynomial. So the first thing is, what is multiplicity? Well, it's the number of times the zero occurs. So if I set this equal to zero here, I'd get x equals two, right? If I set this equal to zero, set that, set that. If I set all of those equal to zero, I'm gonna get x equals two, that's negative five, that's negative one, and that's positive one. And so if I said the multiplicity is the number of times the zero occurs, well, how many of these did I have? I had two of them. I had four of them, I had one of them, I had one of them. So I'd say my multiplicity is two, my multiplicity is four, my multiplicity is one, and then my multiplicity is one. Now, why do I need to know what the multiplicity is? Aha, here we go. Well, the multiplicity tells us how the graph interacts with the zero. So if my multiplicity is even, what's gonna happen is my graph is gonna touch and rebound from that axis. It's going to, and you're probably like, what? So if you were to draw it, it's going to rebound, it's going to hit the zero and it's going to rebound and go back in the other direction. If my multiplicity is odd, what's going to happen is if you have a zero, it's going to go, it's going to not only just touch it, but it's going to cross through it. Well, that helps us graph it because if I know how it's going to cross and go through it, that's going to be much easier for me to go through and graph what I need to graph. So for a couple of examples here, I can say that, you know, my zeros, right? I have two, my, set it equal to zero, set it equal to zero, set it equal to zero. So I do have my zeros, they're two and negative one, but my multiplicity, well, how many of these did I have? I had three of them. So I'm gonna say multiplicity three. I only had one of these, and so I'm gonna say multiplicity one. Now notice we said that if your multiplicity is odd, it's going to cross through. So take a look at this image. It crossed through. It crossed through. Right? It didn't hit the zero and go back down. Let's look at this one. Well, I have set it equal to zero, right? I get one, one, negative two, negative two. So my zeros, negative two and one. Well, how many negative twos do I have? I have two of them. I have two of these ones. So that's why my multiplicity is two. Well, what does that mean? Well, we said that that's going to bounce and rebound the other direction. So it approaches negative two, bounces and rebounds the other direction, bounces and rebounds and goes in the other direction. So that is part of the reason why we need to know the multiplicity is because then when I go into sketch a quick sketch of the graph, I know if it's gonna cross through it, I know if it's gonna bounce through or rebound, it allows me to make assumptions. So finishing it up here, all right, sketching the polynomial. So to be able to do this, I need to first find the zeros and its multiplicity. So set that equal to zero. I'm gonna get x equals one over two. Set that equal to zero, I get negative one. Now, how many of these do I have? I only have one of them. So I'm gonna say multiplicity one. I have two of these, so I'm gonna say multiplicity two. I know it's going to bounce here. I know it's gonna cross here. Without even doing anything with the graph, I know that's what it's going to do. Then my y-intercept. Well, my y-intercept, that means that my x value equals zero. 
So I want to plug in 0 for x and find what my function is. So plugging in 0 for x. So negative 3 times 2 times 0 and 0 plus 1 squared. So I get negative 3 times, well this is going to be negative 1 and this is going to be 1 because 1 squared is 1. So that's going to give me negative 3 times negative 1, positive 3. So my y-intercept is 0, 3. And then now the end behavior. And you're probably looking at this like, wait a minute, what What the heck's going on? Okay, so we need to find the, the, the end behavior. Now when it's factored, all we do is multiply the leading terms together. So negative 3 times 2x times and then x squared. So that gives me negative 6, 1, 2, 3, x cubed. So negative, so I know, and odd. So I know that normally odd functions do that, but because it's negative, it gets flipped. So my function is going to look like that. So now, sketching this. So we said that my zeros are 1 half. Say 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So we said 1 half and negative 1. So now following the in behavior, we know that it's going to start up here. So it's going to start up here. It's going to go all the way down. Now when it gets to negative 1, I know that it's going to bounce, right? So we said right here, the multiplicity is 2, it's going to bounce. So it's going to bounce there and it's going to go back up. Now this is where I need the y-intercept because where is it going to cross the y-axis? So 1, 2, 3. So it's going to rebound it's going to cross the y, and then it's go, it wants to go back to the 0. Now it gets to uh, 1 half. Multiplicity is 1, so it's going to cross, and so it's going to cross through. And so that's going to be a sketch of my graph. Now you can take this in Internet Desmos, and it's not identical, right? It's not perfect, but it's a pretty good sketch. You're going to see there's going to be a lot of similarities to that. Let's look at another one. Now I want you guys to go ahead and practice this and then I'm going to go over it. So going over this. So the first thing, state the zeros and multiplicity. So my zeros are going to be negative 3 and negative 1, right? If I set that equal to 0 and I set that equal to 0. Multiplicity 2, multiplicity 2, because I have two of them. Then the y-intercept, plug in 0. And so that's going to give me 2 times 3 squared times 1 squared, right? If I plug in 0, 0 plus 3 is 3. So that's going to give me 9. That's 18. So 0, 18 is my y-intercept. In behavior, multiply the leading terms. So 2 times x squared, x squared. So that's going to give me 2x to the fourth, positive even so it's going to look like that so then drawing this out my zeros negative 3 and negative 1 and then we said that I'm not going to sit there and sketch it all so we're just going to say that that's 18 to make it a little easier so now my in behavior it's starting up here so starting up here it gets to that 0. We said the multiplicity is 2, which is even, so it's going to bounce. Goes back to the next 0, even, so it's going to bounce. And then it's going to want to cross that. There we go. It wants to cross it as it goes up. And so the in behavior, they both go up. Good. Crosses the y-intercept. Crosses those zeros, but the multiplicity, it's going to bounce because it's even. We win. That's graphed correctly. All right, so closing today's lesson. We talked about polynomials. We introduced how to sketch it and all the different elements of it. So what is the in behavior? It's essentially what the graphs do as x goes to negative infinity and x goes to positive infinity. Is my y is going up or my y is going down? What are the zeros in multiplicity? Well, the zeros are where the graph crosses the x-axis, and the multiplicity is how many of those zeros we have. What do we need to know to sketch a polynomial? You need to know three things. The first, we need to know the in behavior. The second, 
we need to know the zeros and its multiplicity. And then the third, it helps us to know the y-intercept. So this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.